Vans. Transformers Studio Series 86, Ironhide and Ratchet. Damn it, I don't want to talk about cardboard. However, this subline insists I do because the packaging for all Studio Series figures are not only boring black slabs of promotional pointlessness, they also include display backdrops that I will never use because it wastes shelf space. Also, both figures come with the same one, the scene aboard the Autobot shuttle where they both die. How charming. I get to relive the part of the movie where my childhood heroes got massacred. Thanks, Cardboard. Anyway, here is the history lesson for those to whom I already spoiled the ending. Ironhide and Ratchet were a pair of characters from the first year of the original Generation 1 Transformers, repurposed like many Autobots from Takara's Diaclone vehicle line. While the characters themselves were depicted with full humanoid robot bodies and media, the toys they were based on were a far cry from this depiction, featuring no heads, no real torsos, low hanging arms, and all sitting on a weird combat sled. Despite this, the toys remained on shelves annoying youngsters for a year or so before Hasbro decided they were done with this schlock and put out an execution order, to which the movie writers complied. Time passed, nostalgia sunk in, Hasbro shat out a few attempts to placate this nostalgia, and now here we are. So what we have here now is a pair of the most adequately faithful recreations of this character design ever put to plastic at retail price points. Heads are there, filled out torsos, arms are where they belong, and no toboggans. Sure, Ratchet has to deal with these weird hybrid sigils on his shoulders instead of red crosses, but given a bunch of legal malarkey I don't understand or care about, it's fine. Really, my main take with these up front is that the design itself is kind of bland. Accurate, sure, but frankly, the designs kind of stand up there with some of the least distinct robot designs imaginable, and the only thing really saving it is the proportions and detail work. Speaking of, they do both have distinctions from one another beyond the large swaths of one color over the other, that being their heads and crotch plates, which aren't that much different, but I got you looking and now you should feel unclean. Now let's wash that off with some clean articulation, all up to modern standards as it should be, but just shy of enough ankle tilt to impress Van Damme. Van. Damn it all. By the way, they both come with a pair of pretty generic looking Autobot pistols as seen during their final moments in the movie, and possibly some scenes in the show itself. I really don't remember. Ironhide was more well known for the stupid number of liquids that he could shoot out of his wrists, and Ratchet was the medic who did karate kicks. Still, they can be held, stored on the back, or behind the legs. Ratchet has the bonus of coming with a pair of siren lights that can peg on either of the same spot on the back as the guns. A pretty light loadout, but given how nonsensical their arsenal could have been, I think this is more than okay. Changing these two into vans is a bit odd considering how blocky the design is otherwise, as everything has to sit at some kind of angle in relation to other things, and the final fit can be a bit tight and somewhat frightening given that transparent plastic is involved. The end result, however, is a pair of Nissan Vanettes, or some semblance thereof, given the ever-typical licensing sidestepping of Transformers toy designs. It's certainly not perfect in many ways, from the various color shades mismatching, exposed hinges, obvious panel chunks, and the super bland mono colors of both. But considering where these two have been on the journey to this point, I think it's about as acceptable as one could ask for. The weapon storage options are all neat as well, though the underside options make clearance with the ground rather iffy, but they still can roll just about. Wrapping up quickly though, these are pretty good figures for what they are, even if what they are isn't super interesting enough to me beyond the fact that Asbro finally managed to do it right with the absolute minimal amount of compromise. Granted, there is a part of me that gets all wound up and aggravated by that whole this vaguely deluxe size figure being released at a full price point higher than I might think it's worth, and, well, I mean, I feel like they're just densely packed enough to justify that. They just don't look like they are. Like, just staring at these guys, next to some older deluxes especially, I feel like I get more value out of them even if the actual content is somewhat less. Not saying these overpriced and overvalued deluxes are bad in hand, I just can't look at them on a shelf and think the same way about them, 
when I hold them and fiddle with them. Does it matter given I paid full price for both of them and thus gave in to the ever-growing capitalist machine ringing us plebeian fools for everything we have in exchange for yet more plastic entertainment? <sighs> No, but I won't stop bitching about it. This has been another short review from the Devossian Mentality. I should probably animate again at some point. That's what you came here for after all, but hey, it's all toys around here anyways. Thanks for watching, peace out, and plastic in. Ironhide was more well known to this. I don't know how I missed that before. To the stupid. For the stupid. He is known for the stupid! We are all known for! The stupid!